Hey guys, Raider here. Hope you're all doing great and having a fantastic day. Today's video is all about OLED screen burn-in. What is OLED screen burn-in? Well, take a look. It's a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. OLED screen burn-in is when an image that's been on your screen for an elongated period of time now becomes permanently etched into your screen and will never go away. It is what all of us that use OLED screens dread. So in order to get a better understanding of how burning is caused, we first have to understand what is OLED? OLED stands for Organic Light Emitting Diodes. It's a technology that was invented back in 1987 by Kodak to use in their digital cameras. That's correct, Samsung and LG were not the first to invent it. What OLED is, is basically a bunch of layers sandwiched together in each individual pixel, allowing light to pass through it. The pixels are each individually charged with voltage, meaning each one has an on-off state, and this allows us to get the highest contrast ratios possible, the deepest and darkest blacks, the brightest of whites, because we have dimming available on each and individual pixel. This is awesome, as opposed to LCD, which represents all of the other technologies out there. TFT, IPS, mini LEDs like we find on the latest iPads, TNs, which are good gaming panels back in the day. They have very high refresh rates. We have VA panels, which are very popular now. These are all variations of LCD technologies. To whereas on the OLED side, we have OLED, and then we have AMOLED, manufactured by Samsung, and then we have Super AMOLED. So the difference between OLED and AMOLED is AMOLED is basically has a different basic structure in how the layers are fitted together. AMOLED is more power efficient than OLED, consumes less energy, and is less likely to suffer from the burn-in that traditional OLED displays get. And what's the difference between Super AMOLED and AMOLED? Super AMOLED has a digitizer layer built in, which allows us to have touch input and use our S pins. So all of Samsung's latest devices that have touch input with S pin capabilities are all Super AMOLED displays. Now there's a misconception about OLED burn-in because there's two types. One is called image retention and the other one is true OLED burn-in. So what image retention is, is when you have an image that temporarily manifests itself on your screen, but you're able to get rid of it by altering the image, altering your screen brightness, changing out of whatever it is you're once viewing, and then that image goes away shortly after. Whereas OLED burn-in is permanent. You will see an image burned into your screen that will not go away, even after you turn the power on and back off again. So from here on out, we are gonna talk about the best ways of preventing OLED burn-in from happening on your screen. We pay a lot of money for these screens, and we wanna do our best to protect them. Number one, Turn down your screen brightness. This is the number one cause of OLED burn-in issues is staying on a static image with very high screen brightness. Never have your brightness up to max. It's okay to do for a short period of time. Let's say you're going outside, you're fighting reflections coming through your window, but your general rule of thumb, you wanna be down below like 60 to 70%. You don't wanna go above that because as that brightness goes up, you are applying a lot more voltage to each individual pixel. The more voltage applied, the more heat because there's more resistance. And the more heat there is, the more likely you are to suffer from OLED burn-in. The next thing to do, which I highly recommend, is to keep your screen time out low. And you can adjust that here. You're gonna go into settings. All right, we will go into display. And you are gonna go down to where you see screen time out. You'll see here I have it set for 10 minutes, and you'll also notice that is the highest amount of time that you can have here. And that's because Samsung is protecting you from yourself. If you have a non-OLED screen, you'll see a lot more options than this. You'll see like one hour or no screen timeout. But on OLED screen, Samsung limits the timeout period. That way, you're not having any one image shown on your screen longer than this period of time. All right, so I recommend that you go for something like two minutes or under. If you're at two minutes or under, you pretty much don't have to worry about screen burn in at all. So the best rule of thumb is to keep that around two minutes. Next up, and this is very handy for you musicians that use a lot of sheet music or artists that like to use reference drawings to where you'll have a drawing up on your screen and you'll be on another device like a Wacom tablet and you'll constantly refer to your tablet or your phone for reference. In which case you might wanna do this little trick here and that is go into settings, go into accessibility, visibility enhancements, and pick color inversion. What this will do is it'll take everything that you've had on your screen that was one color and invert it to the opposite color. 
So for sheet music that once had a white background, it will now have black, whereas your, your step and your clef and all this will now be white. And while you're doing drawings, your drawing will now be white with a black background. Switch this back and forth occasionally, and this will help prevent burning in those situations. For the next tip, it'll be a lot easier to show if we get rid of this very uh, distracting wallpaper. So let's do that real quick. Go to wallpapers. Let's go ahead and put the default one on. Okay, so we're back to the default wallpaper. The key thing to consider when it comes to OLED burn-in are static elements that stay present on your screen for any length of time. All right, so if we take a look at this screen now, and we just kind of go back and forth between the home screens, and we go up and down the app screen, we can see that a few things here are remaining consistent and constant, right? And what they are is this navigation bar and this status bar. These are screen killers, okay? Especially this navigation bar right here. We need to get rid of this. And I highly recommend you do this on any Samsung device or Android device to where you can manipulate the nav bar. So you're gonna go into settings, you'll go to display, and you're gonna click on navigation bar. So you're gonna see we have the default buttons here, and then we also have swipe gestures. If we switch over to swipe gestures, you'll see now that we go from buttons to having these little tiny bars at the bottom, all right? So now when we minimize, we now hardly have anything at all showing on the screen. And if you download an application called GoodLock, you can actually customize this even more by adjusting the transparency and getting rid of these buttons. I definitely recommend that you do away with the button icons and switch over to gestures, okay? Because you're not gonna have the persistent nav bar anymore and you won't have to worry about these buttons getting etched into your screen permanently. The other thing to consider is the status bar. If we take a close look at this, we'll notice that some of these things are going to be persistent. Like, look here, we have March, right? M-A-R, because we're in the month of March. So throughout the month of March, we will always see M-A-R persistently shown in this status bar on the screen. But we can get rid of that. We'll go to Settings, Notifications, scroll down till you get to Advanced Settings, and then you'll see here the top section is for status bar adjustments. Look at the first one, Show Date. Now watch what happens when I disable that. March is gone. See what I mean? We can also get rid of the battery percentage watch. I don't worry about that because that number changes, right? It goes down from 99 to 90, and then it switches from 89 to 80. You know, that eight turns to a seven, that seven turns to a six. I don't particularly worry about that setting too much. However, for the month, especially if you're using a bright screen, it might be a really good idea to disable that date function. Last, but definitely not least, is to keep in mind of what applications you're using and which content you're viewing on a regular basis. There's certain content that can really be damaged into your device. For example, HBO Go, Comedy Central, that have a persistent bright watermark in the corner and they don't use much transparency on it. For any of those cases, it's really a good idea to either switch from landscape to portrait once in a while or to avoid using those in full screen so you can move the window around a little bit. So in conclusion, is OLED burn-in something you really have to worry about? Well, if you're the type that turns up your screen brightness, you like to stay on one screen for a long period of time. You know, like I said, you're a musician, an artist, someone that has to reference your screen. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a concern. Most definitely a concern. However, if you're the type of person that keeps your screen brightness down a little bit lower, if you keep your screen timeout down, and you don't stay in the same applications all the time, you don't have the same icons being displayed, average, typical day-to-day -day use, nah. No, you don't have anything to worry about. You use these screens for years and years to come. And keep in mind too that AMOLED and Super AMOLED are a little more efficient than OLED panels and don't burn in quite as easily. So those of us that are using Samsung devices, we don't have quite the concern as those using TVs. And TVs have their own ways of preventing OLED, pixel shifting and other technologies. But for us here that use these type of phones and tablets, no, day-to-day -day use is not gonna cause you anything to worry about. It's when you just leave that image on the screen too long and you have that brightness set up way too high. All right, guys, hopefully this has helped someone set your mind at ease as to what causes screen burn-in and what you can do to help alleviate it from ever happening to begin with. As always, guys, thanks for watching.